This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2015. I'm at the Epson exhibit. Joining me is Michael Leva, who's product manager for Epson's Movario augmented reality glasses. Welcome to the program, Michael. Thank you, thanks for having me. So tell us about these BT200 glasses. Sure, so some people might be familiar with the glasses. These have been out on the market actually since last year. We launched them at CES last year, and people at that point were just interested in the hardware. Over the last year though, we've been building out the developer ecosystem. So if you look around the booth, that's what's being showcased. It's all the cool things people are doing on the hardware platform since this is largely the same as it was last year. But people are finding new and exciting ways to build software on it. So for those who aren't familiar, can you explain what the hardware does? Absolutely. So what you have here is Epson technology in the form of projectors. So a lot of people know that's a core strength. Two mini Pico projectors, one in each leg. That allows you to do 3D side-by-side -side stereoscopic uh, uh, images. And so you use, in our case, polycarbonate lenses and have an optic waveguide that redirects the image until it gets to these two prisms right in the center of the glass. That's when your retinas pick it up and you have this very large field of view, about 80 inches or a 23 degree field of view screen out in front of you. Exciting because it enables people with the transparency to actually overlay 3D objects on the real world. So you can, it, it's intended as an augmented reality device. Does it do virtual reality as well? It can do virtual as well. It's not going to be something like Oculus where you have that 110 degree field of view. The difference is this is transparent, whereas when you have an enclosed system, you can of course expand that field of view. But in VR, as long as we put on different levels of shades to block out some of reality, then you can build experiences that use, for example, positional head tracking and movement based on the sensors in these glasses. So that, we've been talking about the display portion of the, of the glasses. Is there a camera on there as well? There is, so to do augmented reality, you almost always need some sort of front-facing camera. The reason being is the camera detects the real world objects. It might be a marker like a QR code, it might be a physical object like a machine. Whatever triggers it, the camera picks it up, processes it, and then overlays information on top of it in the real world. Now is this, a, like what, what operating system are you using to, to drive this? I mean, what, what, what software makes it work? Sure. So, we wanted this to be accessible to the developer community, so it runs on Android. Right now it's Android 4.0. We are working, of course, with either this model or future models to get it on a much more updated version of Android. Uh, but it really, it operates almost like a tablet out of the box. When you put these on, you'll recognize the Android home screen. It'll just be sitting in front of your face instead of on your mobile screen. And the other difference is you have to be aware of the position and the orientation of the sensors. So in a tablet or a phone, you, you know where the gyro, the accelerometer is. In this case, you have to be aware where they are in the glasses so you can use it to track your head movement. So let's talk a bit about the software support. I, I, let's say I, I buy a pair of the augmented, the Movario BT200 glasses. What can I do with them? So when you get them out of the box, we don't expect it to be something that a consumer is picking up and just all of a sudden playing with. This is much more of a developer platform still. So again, around the booth, we have about 12 different developers, and the way we support them is giving them all the resources they need, whether it's our SDKs, providing plugins for Unity, things like that so they can build cool software for the device. If you're an end consumer, there are certain applications, for example, like this DJI drone app that allows you to use the glasses as a second screen. But for the most part, again, we're selling it to the developer community, and they're showing us what the potential is for this type of device. Well, what kinds of uh, software have you seen? Like, what are some exciting applications that you've seen in preparation for Bavario at a consumer level? So, because this is CES, we are showing some of the consumer applications. One of them is a company called LightShot. They're building this kind of laser tag in the real world with infrared sensors. They want people to wear the glasses to communicate so that they get real-time information as they're running around trying to zap people that says, hey, you're the target, or hey, I'm the assassin, and gives you all the, the player stats, the information, including their GPS, so you can find them within a crowded hall or an outdoor location. Other ones include VR and AR apps that just put you in a much more immersive world, and again, take advantage of the tracking and the glasses, so you don't even need to use a handset. You can walk around in real life, and you're walking around in the game. You can look around in the real world, and again, you're looking around in that virtual environment. So some of those are gaming and, uh, uh, gaming and kind of entertainment apps, but then again, this is also one of the biggest consumer apps right now. 
with drones and quadcopters really taking off, people want to fly with them. So how would, how would you use the Moverio with a drone? Let's go with that example. It's a great question. And with DJI, right now it supports the vision line of, uh, vision line of drones. And what essentially happens is when you're flying a drone, you want to be able to maintain line of sight with it. But currently, they also want to get information that shows what is the camera looking at, and then also what's the real-time telemetry data. So how high is the drone, how much battery life, how far, its compass, you know, everything like that. Right now, they put a phone here or a tablet, and the transmitter sends the information to the phone. But that means they're looking down at their mobile device and taking their eyes off the thing they're supposed to be flying. So they've bought these because they can get all that same information directly in front of them. And because it's transparent, they can still keep an eye on the drone while they fly. Is there a range limit for making this technology work? The cool thing with DJI and the reason this works so well is that they actually have a transmitter right here on the controller. So it's communicating wirelessly with the quadcopter, but then the range for the glasses to hear is a couple feet because you're holding it and you're wearing the glasses. So with their light bridge technology, they can fly these about, I don't want to quote exactly because I'm not DJI, but I think about up to a mile. So there's a camera on the drone, I take it, so you could see what the camera sees through your glasses, yes? Exactly, exactly right. Is there any discussion about making it a stereoscopic camera or a 3D camera because you've got this two lens potential? You're on to something. I think a lot of people are excited about that type of potential where because this can render in 3D with stereoscopic ability, if you had that type of camera on a device, uh, on a quadcopter, you'd be seeing some pretty cool stuff. So I haven't seen it done yet. I hope it will come at some point. So with the BT200s, are they, I mean, it sounds to me like they're very much targeted to industry at this point, to industry, to developers. I mean, you described a, a, a scenario with laser tag, and I'm imagining these youngsters, yes, I call people youngsters now, running around uh, with this, like, you know, it's not inexpensive. It's, no. you, it's a significant investment to get what you get. Um, is Epson looking forward to a future where it's going to be affordable options for consumers? Is this what they're preparing for? Absolutely. I mean, I think of it now as still a dev platform. So you're right, at the price and also at, at the design, this is large, it's 88 grams. Most people probably don't want to run around with it right now because we don't want them to trip and fall or anything like that. Lightshot, the cool thing is they're launching this Kickstarter and they said, what? This might be one other way to have a higher level incentive for a Kickstarter backer to include smart glasses integration. But for the most part, until we make this a lot smaller, where it fits more almost like your pair of glasses right there, and you get it down to a consumer-friendly price point, we don't expect people to start buying it in the consumer realm like that. Enterprise, they're much more willing, because if it helps them improve their productivity and efficiency, then it's a no-brainer to buy it. Do you have, uh, can you speak to a training example? Like I, I know of a company, Scope AR, maybe you could speak to some stuff that they're doing. Yeah, so Scope's right over there, and they've, uh, they're demonstrating today what they call a guided walkthrough. It uses augmented reality where, let's say you have an engine part in front of you, and as a junior level technician, I may be somewhat familiar with it, but I don't want to have to take out paper manuals or look back at a monitor where I'm looking at instructions and videos of how to take it apart and how to service it. So what they do is they actually build the models and then they overlay those 3D models directly on top of the real world object. What that enables is now the user's hands are free to actually service the machine and they have the image right in front of them. So they call it see what I, or see and then do. You're seeing what you're supposed to do. You even see augmented 3D tools come into the picture and show where you're supposed to place them. And then you can actually do that action and make sure you're doing it correctly. Wonderful. So before we go, price point? So right now this retails for $699 for in the U.S. Um, for developers, we have a, a contest running where they can get up to $200 off simply by submitting an idea. And then if they want to, they can even enter and try to win glasses and cash prizes. We do anticipate, as I mentioned, that as we go further down into a consumer level product, that we would try to bring that price down. Okay, sounds good. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. This is Neil Schneider for MTVS TV. We'll be back with more. Thanks for watching.